Hello and welcome to chapter 19, Fossil Fuels, Their Impacts in Energy Conservation. So yes, we have been introduced to fossil fuels many times in many uh, earlier chapters. However, in chapter 19, we're really going to get the bulk of fossil fuels. Okay, so let's take a look at some uh, general sources of energy here. So to start off, we have both non-renewable, which is uh, a finite amount, and renewable, which is an infinite amount. So uh, taking a look under the uh, non-renewable fossil fuel category, we have crude oil, natural gas, and coal. And under renewable, we have nuclear, biomass, hydropower, solar uh, power, wind power, geothermal energy, and tidal and wave energy. Okay, so let's take a more in-depth look here at fossil fuels. Coal. So coal, uh, as an energy source, makes up about 29% of the world's energy use. There are basically three main types of uh, ways to mine coal, all of which aren't particularly um, environmentally friendly. However, uh, these are strip mining, subsurface mining, and mountaintop removal. When you look at natural gas, think of something like methane. Uh, so natural gas together makes up about 25% of the world's total energy use. Uh, more and more difficult to uh, extract, and so we are using new techniques such as uh, fracking. And fracking is a, a pretty controversial topic at the moment uh, when looking at environmental studies. It's really environmentally unfriendly in the sense that it pollutes aquifers and our groundwater resources. Okay, so this carries us on over uh, to the most popular uh, fossil fuel, which is oil. So together, oil makes up about 35% of the world's total energy use. And that's because petroleum is very versatile. It uh, has many uses. You can use it to charge most things. However, when looking at oil, there's something important to uh, understand, which is peak oil, or uh, Hubbard's peak. And basically what this theory states is that when oil production comes to its peak, it then declines, but demand increases because of population size, we're going to run out of oil and there's going to be a huge problem. Basically, uh, when looking at Hubbard's peak theory, uh, he, uh, Hubbard himself pretty much said that U.S. production of oil will peak in the 1970s, which is pretty much true. And so peak oil is a pretty scary topic because it's basically saying that, yes, oil is a finite resource, but we don't really exactly know when we're going to run out of it, and it could happen very quickly. Okay, so that carries us on over into the effects of fossil fuels. Uh, so most of this section is a review from Chapter 18 uh, in the sense of water and air pollution uh, because of fossil fuels. So refer to the Chapter 18 video that I posted uh, just before this one uh, if you want to review on any of that. But in Chapter 18, we didn't look at uh, effects of fossil fuels from coal mining, so we can take a quick look at those. So uh, there's a term known as acid drainage, which is basically a natural process, but uh, the mining of coal accelerates uh, the amount and the uh, magnitude of acid drainage quite a lot. So that's basically sulfuric acid forming and uh, ruining like a river land. This one here. Um, another uh, pretty negative effect of coal mining is habitat destruction. So if you look at something such as mountaintop removal, that's literally cutting off the top of, uh, of mountains and completely destroying an ecosystem in order to mine coal within a mountain. So you, as you can imagine, uh, that's pretty destructive. So when examining um, fossil fuels such as petroleum, there are obviously political, social, and economic aspects to uh, that market as well. So there is a lot of dependency on uh, foreign oil, which does spark conflict uh, in the Middle East, for instance. Uh, that's uh, one of the major causes of a lot of the issues there and a lot of the wars and the fighting that's been going on. Um, so basically, when uh, most of the world is dependent on a certain region or a certain country for oil or something of that resource, that just breeds conflict because uh, they control the entire market. So that's not inherently good. Uh, moreover, uh, take a very poor country, for example, and uh, you would assume that if there's a lot of oil exportation, that there's a lot of mo money flowing around the economy in that country. However, that isn't really true. So mainly uh, when dealing with oil money, um, a lot of that is centered around a few families or a certain corporation, and it doesn't actually benefit any of the residents of that country. Okay, so let's take a look at efficiency and conservation. So efficiency and conservation have been going up. There's a lot of green technology out there, and uh, people in general are willing to um, make a sacrifice and um, maybe pay a little more for green technology in the moment in order to save the world, potentially. 
So, uh, as you uh, have noticed on the streets, I'm sure there is a lot of uh, more fuel-efficient vehicles uh, hitting the road. So we have hybrids like this, and we have the Cash for Clunkers program, etc. There's a topic known as cogeneration, which is actually pretty cool. So take a power plant, for instance. Um, in order to create electricity in a power plant, uh, for instance, you need to use power. And so there's a lot of heat and energy released from the actual making of energy. So cogeneration is basically closing off that circuit. So um, you could either use that energy release to power the plant itself or use it to power um, homes in the area or just really use that power uh, so it's not just being wasted. So something else to note is uh, just as a general principle, we shouldn't just conserve or just use renewable energy and renewable resources. Uh, we should combine both uh, in order to really get the best results and uh, prolong the um, natural resources of our country and our planet. Okay, so this brings us right to our conclusion here. So fossil fuels have helped us progress uh, monumental amounts in the past couple hundreds of years. However, uh, current day, for the sake of our planet, we must now become more reliable on uh, renewable resources instead. Okay, so in chapter 20, we're going to take a look at conventional energy alternatives. Thank you and see you next time.